Hi, Peter Dingle here, PhD, with the Natural Remedies Report. Today, it, it is literally the 12 foods to lower hypertension, high blood pressure. And it's so important that we actually address high blood pressure because the estimates in the US and Australia, which pretty well mirror each other, it is about 30% of the adult population has high blood pressure and another 30% has pre-hypertension. So just before they get there, they're on their way there and they've probably got a 50-50 chance of getting up into that hypertension range. Now, what's really important about hypertension, high blood pressure, is it literally is a serious and a real risk factor. Now, unlike cholesterol, okay, cholesterol is an association, high blood pressure is a real risk factor and it's the single biggest risk factor for mortality. So if there's one thing that you can address in your life is lowering your blood pressure. Get it checked regularly, um, check it out. If you've got high blood pressure, then look at ways of reducing it. The great thing here is I'm going to give you a dozen different foods, 12 different foods that have been shown in all of the scientific studies to lower blood pressure. Now, the good thing about what I do with our Natural Remedies Report is that I go and get the scientific literature. Actually, to put this together, we've got about 40 or 50 different studies that I've reviewed over the, the years that show us that you can lower blood pressure. Now, one of the biggest concerns is, of course, the medical profession out there that with the best intentions say you can't do it with food. The reality is for 95, 99% of people, you can. Because food is our medicine. That's what we're supposed to be getting into our body to fix our body to bring us back to a state of balance. And this is where I want to start my talk about high blood pressure. I see it not as a disease, but as a symptom of a body being out of balance. It's a little bit like my watering system, my reticulation system. I live in a pretty hot, hot and dry uh, area of Australia, down Fremantle away. And what happens is we water it, we have automated reticulating systems. So the, the watering comes on at a certain time, early in the morning. And in the reticulation system, three things are important. The pipes, the water, the liquid in there, and the third one is literally the control system. Now, in a very simplistic model, that is no different to your cardiovascular system. And when we're talking about high blood pressure, it's primarily the pipes that have gone wrong. And what we find is the pipes, which are our arteries, are not functioning to their optimal level. And inside the pipe, so if you can imagine as that as an artery there, inside is one layer thick cell called the endothelial tissue, the endothelium, which is this one cell thick. And that one cell there protects your arteries. It manages your arteries. It controls your arteries. And that one cell thick produces a gas called NO, nitric oxide. And when nitric oxide is released from here, it goes to the muscles surrounding here, the muscles that go around there, and they make them relax. And hence, they lower the blood pressure. Now, the biggest problem is we're not, our endothelial tissue is damaged, we're not getting enough nitric oxide produced, and hence, our arteries are really rigid and hard, and, by the way, damaged as well. Now, if you want to know something about a little trivia about nitric oxide, that's how Viagra works. Yep, Viagra, I think it's a blue pill, don't know. Viagra works by simply uh, increasing the nitric oxide down in a certain region of the male anatomy, and hence allowing increased blood flow down there. Now, that doesn't work for the rest of the body, and what we do find is you can increase the nitric oxide and other beneficial components. And the great thing about taking a dietary approach to lowering your blood pressure is that it doesn't just lower it. It can actually rebalance it for those who, who have low blood pressure. It can actually increase it a little. And what it does, it brings it back to your own state of balance, homeostasis. And so we're trying to get back to that balance. Now, in the process of doing that, when you use food as your medicine, it actually heals it heals the damage done in the arteries. 
So while lowering blood pressure, it also repairs the artery, unblocks the arteries. It um, uh, does all those other benefits around the body. So it has huge benefits. It's, uh, but here we're looking at one, but it's got hundreds of other benefits out there. So why medicine? Uh, because medicine works in a holistic way of treating the whole body. Now what we do know is if you look at the, the big studies out there, what are called epidemiological studies of populations, we know that um, the, the dietary approach, different dietary approaches do work. And if you look at them, there's something called the DASH diet, which is your dietary approaches to stop hypertension. Um, the Mediterranean diet, the Norwegian diet, the paleo diet, you've all heard of these. And of course, a vegetarian diet, raw diet, all of these have demonstrated to lower blood pressure. So we know just from the big studies out there that just taking the average of all of these, they lower blood pressure. And that tells us, first of all, then, then a, a large part of the blood pressure problem, the hypertension in our society, is caused by the poor eating habits. And you're going to hear me say this time and time again. It's the ultra processed foods. The foods in a package, even though they're making all these great claims about whatever they've got in there, they've lost the essential components that your body needs for nutrition. And sure, it might be short term nice having some junk food, but it's going to cause a lot of long term health problems, including hypertension. Now, the good thing is the foods I've selected for you, which I think are the best ones and they show up in the studies the best, but they're also pretty tasty, too. So have a look at what we're going to suggest. But before we do, remember, there are other things that can contribute to hypertension, too. And that includes things like smoking, poor sleep uh, and stress. The three S's smoking, poor sleep and stress. All of those contribute to too high blood pressure. In fact, just going to the doctors, um, you get what's called the white coat effect and your blood pressure tends to go up. Hence why it's much better to take the blood pressure in home. Now, there, there are watches that do it now. There are cheap systems you can get well worth getting, given that 30% of the population have high blood pressure and another 30% are on their way to it with pre-hypertension. So with that in mind, and the understanding that the solution does lie in nutrition for probably 95% of blood pressure, then what are the foods? Well, the first I thought shows up repeatedly is fish. Now, fish shows up, first of all, it's rich in omega-3 fatty acids. You've heard of the fish oils, which are really good. But fish has also got some very, very good amino acids in it that help relax and work with muscles, become neurotransmitters, and, and do a lot of other things around the body that can benefit blood pressure. They're also rich in minerals, um, which are, is essential for good blood pressure. So adding fish to your diet on a daily basis has repeatedly been shown to reduce your risk of, of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks and strokes. And one of the ways it does that is by lowering the risk of hypertension, by lowering your blood pressure. The second one, one that comes up the most frequently in the studies is beetroot. Now there's probably over a hundred studies of beetroot and blood pressure, beetroot and athletic performance. You see, there's a huge body of evidence out there in the athletic world, in the training world, where they supplement with beetroot to get increased performance. And what it does for the athletes is it relaxes the arteries. It, uh, the, the beetroots have a, a very rich in something called nitrates. Now you also find, by the way, you find nitrates in your many of your vegetables, your cabbage family like kale, broccoli, cabbage and all those ones. Uh, bok choy all belong to that family. Uh, you also get nitrates in some, your, your lettuce and so on. So great to have the lettuce, great. Okay, um, you'll find nitrates in a lot of different foods out there. And these nitrates in beetroot and these foods are converted to nitric dioxide, NO2. Nitrates are converted to nitric, di nitric dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, sorry, NO2, in the mouth and then in the arteries, NO, and that releases it. And there are dozens of studies, um, dozens and dozens of studies on the benefits of beetroot in athletic performance, as well as just in um, uh, the general population with overweight people, diabetics, every, all of those. And the good thing is, the, uh, the nitrates come with a lot of other nutrients in beetroot too. So beetroot juice is a very, very common. You can actually go to a health food stall and, and get some um, uh, beetroot powder as well. 
I just prefer the beetroot and we do regular beetroot juices. In fact, it's a component of my blood pressure smoothie that I'll talk about at, a, at another date when I want to give you even more information. Hypertension is so important that we need to act on it and it, it's worth a couple of these sessions. The um, third group, the third, and by the way, um, and beetroot lowers the blood pressure by a, 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 probably on average about 5%. But nearly all of these foods lower blood pressure more the higher you've got. So if you've got a blood, blood pressure up at 180, it can actually take it down to 130. Uh, or 140 or 150. So the higher the blood pressure, the greater the drop that it generally does. And if you've got blood pressure sitting around about the limits of 130, 135, 140, then it'll usually drop at one or two percent. And the key here is to look at this and go, okay, I can add beetroot, but then where can I add all these other things in there? And these other things, will, again, remember, they will have multiple benefits around the body. But on top of that, they'll have a synergistic effect. So if you add the beetroot with, the, with, the, with the, all these different foods out there that we're going to go through, then you get the, benef the multiple benefits. The, the fourth one, or the third one, is olive oil. And again, the studies show that the, uh, and here we're talking about extra virgin olive oil, fresh from wherever you live, uh, is the best you can get. And it's full of polyphenols. Now the oils, which are called the monounsaturates, help. But the polyphenols appear to be the most potent and have a, 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 the most effective component of olive oil. And it shows that it, it drops at about 2 or 3% just by adding olive oil. And again, the more you have, which is contrary kind of to the belief that we've been brought up with, oil stay away from and the more you have them, well, the more you have, the lower... It, it takes the, the blood pressure. It's what's called a dose-response relationship. The higher the dose, the bigger the response in lowering blood pressure. Our fourth one are uh, nuts, and I've grouped all the nuts together because there are lots of studies on all of the nuts. And um, so add, add, add all of the nuts. They're great. Just add them to your food um, wherever you can. They're a great healthy snack, and they're rich in polyphenols. They're a great fiber food for the gut, which, again, helps with that whole idea of lowering blood pressure and improving the overall health of the body. Um, they've got the right type of mix of oils and so on, so they have multiple benefits. In particular, though, they have something called arginine. And arginine works in a different way to actually increase the, uh, the level of nitric oxide down in the arteries where it's needed and lower blood pressure. Now, just arginine alone, there are hundreds of studies just on arginine and nuts, particularly almonds, are very rich in them. So um, from all the studies, all the nuts I've seen benefit, but best ones uh, tend to show up as uh, pistachios being the number one, which shows up. Uh, almonds are uh, very high and walnuts up there as well. So uh, each of them lower the blood pressure two, three, four, up to 5% with the pistachios. So a great little addition to any type of meal. Now, following on from nuts is uh, your, your chocolate, cacao, or... or um, yeah, your, your, your dark chocolates, it's full of flavonoids. And these flavonoids, and here's my little bit of dark chocolate, by the way. Now with the dark chocolate, always make sure that it's low sugar. You can get a lot of dark chocolates and they've still got 60% sugar. So I've got an 85% dark chocolate there. Um, and that 85% has 10% uh, sugar. That's about the lowest, one of the lowest ones I can find at a pretty good reasonable price. So you can add that to your meal any day. Look, this is seriously better than having cornflakes for breakfast. Uh, by the way, don't have as much, but having this chewing on some dark chocolate, low sugar, uh, has been, again, repeatedly shown to it, it lower the, the, the um, blood pressure, probably through the flavonoids, the, the dark components in the chocolate, um, increasing the level of NO, nitric oxide, and lowering blood pressure. Tea has been shown repeatedly, black and green repeatedly, about three to four to five percent uh, for having that. So, and the studies show the more you have, the better it is, and the longer period of time you have, the better it is as well. So, all of these things are adding up. You've got the two, three, four, five, six, seven percent, and you put them together. And uh, we've had we've had people who have literally we had one lady at one of the, of the seminars that I was running, and her blood pressure went from two hundred and 10 on 110 
to 110 on 75 in a matter of two to three weeks. Isn't that amazing? And all it was, was food. All it was, was food. And she now has that every day. But even when she goes off it, the blood pressure doesn't shoot up because all the repair work in the arteries has been done. Now, one of the best um, uh, one of the best foods for actual blood pressure is hibiscus. That's my number seven on the list. I could have put it in the teas, but it stands out alone because the research shows you can actually have a, up to 10% reduction in your blood pressure. So if you're sitting on, let's say, 170 uh, over um, 80 or something, it's likely to take your blood pressure down to about 150, 153, 155. If it's up higher, it's likely to bring it down um, maybe, maybe 20 or 30 millimeters of mercury. That's the MMHG that you see, or what I call points. So it can be quite dramatic in terms of the impact it can have. So uh, a huge benefit in lowering blood pressure, hibiscus tea, and uh, <laughs> it's so incredibly cheap. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a, a brand of hibiscus tea, that's the one we use, and uh, I'm actually, because I've been researching, you may not be able to see it, but it's a bright red color. And there are lots and lots of benefits of it here. Uh, by the way, gut benefits as well of hibiscus tea. And a couple of cups of hibiscus tea added into all what we're doing here, we have the benefit. Uh, number eight is coconut water. Coconut water has uh, been shown to repeatedly, and coconut water has been ha hammered uh, by, by some of the authorities out there. It's ridiculous. Coconut water is a natural food that historically, historically all the populations who consumed it were healthy. And we've seen drops from anywhere from 10 to 20% in blood pressure from coconut water. And that's a couple of glasses every day. For the drinks, we're talking a couple of glasses every day. And again, you imagine that coconut water added on. Make sure it's natural, no sweetening. Uh, watermelon comes in at number nine for me. Watermelon, a great one. Pomegranate juice, number 10. And these are things that you can regularly get at mostly supermarkets or health food stores. Number 11 is uh, vinegar. And uh, I love talking about vinegar because we know some of the benefits are working directly through the gut to lower blood pressure. And my number 12 on the list here is linseed and flaxseed. Now imagine if you combined two or three of these together to make a smoothie or a juice. Imagine you ate two or three or four or five of these other things every single day. And remember, it's not going to happen overnight, but what does happen, the research shows, is over a period of one to two weeks, you potentially see dramatic reductions in blood pressure. And the good thing is, while it's actually lowering the blood pressure, it's also fixing the problem. It's repairing the damage done into the arteries, which is a win-win-win situation. So I hope you've got a really a lot of really good information out of here, the, uh, you know, the, the 12 foods to lower your blood pressure. Um, this is a part of, of our, our, literally our natural remedies report. And if you follow the link below, you'll find a lot more information on this. And what would be great is share this with your friends, because if they haven't told you, they've probably got high blood pressure and would appreciate a little bit of help. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.